This video explains how to handle NAN values in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples and in the first lines of code, I want to show you some basic computations that might lead to an NAN value in R. So in the first line of code in line two, I'm simply dividing the value five by the value two. And as you can see, after running this line of code at the bottom in the RStudio console, a valid value is returned. So in this case, the result of this computation is 2.5. However, if you run line four of the code, where we are dividing zero by zero, you can see that the value NAN is returned. NAN stands for not a number. And this is because it's not possible to divide zero by zero. And for that reason, the R programming language returns not a number or in short NAN. So this is why NANs sometimes might occur. And in the following examples, I want to show you how to handle these NAN values in R. So first I'm creating a vector object which contains some NAN values, as you can see in line six of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data object is appearing, which is called X. And as you can see, this data object contains some numeric values, but it also contains some NAN values, and it also contains an NA value. So NA values are used for missing data. So NA stands for not available. So in the next step, I want to show you how to identify the positions in our vector object at which NAN values occur. And we can do that with the isNAN function, as you can see in line eight of the code. So in this line of code, I'm applying this function to our data object X. And after running this line of code, you can see at the bottom that a logical indicator is returned. And as you can see, this logical indicator is always false when no NAN value is stored in our data object X and it is true when an NAN value is occurring. So in our specific example, the first two values are not NAN and for that reason, the value false is returned twice. However, the third value of our vector object is NAN and for that reason, the logical indicator true is returned. Please note that the isNAN function only returns true in case of NAN values, but not in case of NA values, as you can see at the second last position of our vector. So in the next step, I want to show you how to identify the index positions of those NAN values. And we can do that by applying the isNAN function once again, as you can see in line 10 of the code. However, this time we are also wrapping the which function around this. So if you run line 10 of the code, you can see that the values three and seven are returned. And these are the index positions in our vector that are NAN. So we have an NAN at the third position and at the seventh position. We can also count the number of NAN values in our data, as you can see in line 12 of the code. So once again, I'm using the is.nan function. And this time I'm combining this function with the sum function. So if you run line 12 of the code, you can see that the value two is returned. And this is because our data object X contains two NAN values. It's also possible to remove NAN values from a data object, as you can see in line 14 of the code. So in this line of code, I'm subsetting our data object X based on the isNAN function. Please note that we are specifying a bang sign in front of the isNAN function because we want to keep those values that are not NAN. And then within the is.nan function, I'm specifying the name of our data object and I'm storing the output of this in a new data object that I'm calling X remove. So if you run line 14 of the code, you can see that a new data object is appearing at the top right of RStudio, which is called X remove. And we can print this data object to the RStudio console by running line 15 of the code. And then you can see that we have removed all NAN values from our data. We can also replace the NAN values in our data, as you can see in lines 17 and 18 of the code. 
So first in line 17, I'm duplicating our data object X because I want to keep an original version of the data object. So after running line 17 of the code, you can see at the top right that another data object is appearing, which is called X replace. And at this point, this data object contains exactly the same values as our input data object X. And then in line 18 of the code, I'm using the is.nan function to specify the locations where we have NAN values. And in this case, I'm assigning to these locations the value zero. So if you run line 18 of the code, our vector object is updated. And we can see that by printing the data object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 19 of the code, and then you can see that we have created another vector object, which contains the same non-NAN values. However, all positions where we had an NAN value have been replaced by the value zero. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.